Aromatherapy, how does scent impact our mood? I'm Kristen Mango and I'm a certified clinical aromatherapist and today we're going to talk about just that. Aroma is defined as scent or odor, so it seems aromatherapy should be defined as therapy or treatment with scent. But modern aromatherapy also includes the topical use of essential oils diluted in a carrier oil and even the ingestion of oils, which is sometimes referred to as aromatic medicine. But the use of traditional aromatherapy or treatment using aroma and even the use of topical applications can be utilized by just about anyone with a few safety guidelines. A great way to utilize the benefits of aromatherapy is through inhalation. There's a misconception that inhalation is in some way the lowest level or even the safest way to use essential oils. Then comes topical application and then ingestion. These are really methods of application and not steps in terms of efficacy. In fact, studies have shown that bl the blood-brain barrier can be crossed by certain medications through the nose. Think of someone with asthma using a nebulizer or inhalers. And it's long been thought that scent plays a role in health. Hippocrates and Galen believed scent played a role in digestion. Galen was the first to associate scent with the brain. He believed the nose was a passageway to carry aromas to the brain. Medically, this meant aromas could have healing powers because of their ability to penetrate the brain. But they also believed well into the 17th century that aroma carried disease, and that's what made people sick. Now, they may not have gotten it right when it comes to the way that disease is spread, but they were definitely onto something when they observed that smell could affect our emotions. Scientific research now supports these ancient ideas. Some of this may be a placebo effect. Some of it is based more on personal feelings, past experiences, or personal preference towards a particular smell, more than the actual chemical composition of an oil. That doesn't make the impact of, that an aroma can have any less impressive. The effects of scent memory aren't limited to essential oils in any way. An aroma of any kind can transport you to a different time. The smell of freshly baked bread may bring you back to your childhood, helping your grandma bake, or the smell of fresh rain or cut grass makes you think of summer. Conversely, you may find the scent brings up negative emotions if it's associated with a traumatic or unpleasant experience. These feelings may come up subconsciously, and in some instances, the scent doesn't even have to be perceivable to you to have an impact on your emotions. The human sense of smell is a thousand times more sensitive than the sense of taste. It's capable of detecting scent molecules even at very low concentrations. After a short time, the scents may begin to neutralize, but the effects are still present even if we aren't aware of the scent any longer. What that looks like in our body after we inhale a scent depends on the information received. Here's why. The olfactory system is responsible for your sense of smell and how you perceive those scents. When you breathe in any aroma, a few things happen instantly. It travels through your nose, where it's introduced to the olfactory mucous membranes near the back of your nose under the bridge. Here they are picked up by receptor proteins that, rec that recognize and bind to the odor molecules, stimulating the cells to send a signal to your brain. The human brain is capable of identifying over 10,000 different fragrances. Once a scent is identified, it passes through the olfactory bulb, amplifying the scent and passing it through the olfactory nerve directly to the limbic system of the brain. The sense of smell is directly linked to the outside. The result is that the odor immediately reflects itself onto the brain. The scent molecules stimulate the impulses along the olfactory tract directly to the middle brain, also known as the primitive brain or limbic system. The limbic system has two important areas that are triggered by nerve impulses, the amygdala and the hippocampus. These are the cent centers for memory, sexuality, emotional reactions, and creativity. Here the scents are compared to scents in your memory and paired with emotions and feelings from your past. These are merged together to form a scent memory. This results in an emotional and physical reaction to a scent through the autonomic nervous system. From this point, nerve impulses are sent to the hypothalamus, the control center of the pituitary, which is the subcenter for the transmission of messages to other areas of the brain. 
It's the area of brain, the brain that conveys chemical messages, activates and releases hormones, and regulates body function. The thalamus connects the limbic system of the brain to the scent information and passes it along to the areas of thinking and judgment. This whole process happens in just a few seconds. You can see that the simple act of inhalation isn't quite so simple act after all. With a direct connection to the control center of our brain, inhalation can have a huge impact on us physically and psychologically. What does that look like when it's applied in practical terms? The effects of essential oils on the autonomic nervous system and central nervous system have been studied in a variety of different applications, from pre and post operative stress management to stress management, nursing staff, mood improvement, long term hospital stays, and pre exam stress reduction in college students. One study that plays well into what we're talking about here today is one that was performed on teachers. This is a field where burnout is extremely high, so they wanted to test essential, if essential oils could help with work related stress reduction. So bergamot essential oil was used in an aromatherapy spray for 10 minutes. Blood pressure autonomic nervous uh, system parameters were recorded five minutes before and after the application of the aromatherapy spray. Results showed that there was a significant decrease in blood pressure, heart rate, and other markers used after the application of the spray. They went on to divide them into different subsections and saw improvements in each group. Think about how easy that is to incorporate into your life. Just five minutes of incorporating aromatherapy into your routine to help reduce situational stress. This may not seem like a big deal at first glance, but let's remember that stress has a compounding effect on our health. Whenever we take measures to decrease that stress, we are making a positive impact. Another herb that's been used to affect our emotions is rosemary. Rosemary is often called the herb of remembrance. It has been used to improve cognitive function by boosting uh, memory, increasing focus, and mental clarity. A study was conducted to assess the olfactory impact of lavender and rosemary on cognitive performance and mood in healthy volunteers. Analysis of the performance revealed that lavender produced a significant uh, decrement in performance of working memory and impaired reaction times for both memory and attention based on tasks compared to the tr control. So it was a little bit slower because uh, lavender is a, a sedative, has sedative properties. Now rosemary produces significant enhancement of performance for overall quality of memory and secondary memory factors, but also produced uh, an, an impairment of speed of memory compared to controls. Both the control and lavender groups were significantly less alert than the rosemary condition. However, the control group was significantly less content than both rosemary and lavender conditions. Studies have also shown that when combined with lavender, rosemary may help reduce anxiety. To utilize these benefits, rosemary could be used in a diffuser or a room spray for a mid-afternoon pick-me-up. Now, it's worth noting as well, medicinal doses of rosemary, rosemary should not be used through inhalation or ingestion by those with seizure, dis, seizure disorders. It's also contraindicated for children under the age of seven. And this is a not a hard and fast rule. Seven is like assuming an, uh, a developmentally, uh, that the child's developmentally at kind of a seven-year-old, a smaller child, it may take longer for them to be able to use lavender. So it's kind of, you also have to use your uh, judgment here a little bit with uh, age uh, contraindications for kids. Uh, this oil should be avoided by women who are pregnant or who may become pregnant. And the internal use is contraindicated by those with liver disease, obstructed bile, bile ducts, gallstones, or hypertension. So, we can see that scent can have a huge impact on our uh, physical and emotional being. It's a really great tool to utilize. You don't have to do a ton um, 
know a ton about chemical composition necessarily to utilize the benefits of inhalation. They can be used based off of a scent that you enjoy and keep them in a safe dilution for whatever oil you're using. If you have any questions about uh, specific essential oils for any type of mood enhancement or um, emotional support, be sure to post your comments and questions inside of Rise Up. And we will be back with another video on specific essential oils for uh, mood soon.